Is the prophecy of the fist true? Is Daredevil set to die? Is there no way he can change his fate? Well, let's hop into the pages of Daredevil issue number 12 and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the book, all of Matt's friends in the fist are finally getting released from jail, thanks to Matt's own political maneuvering with the Stromwind twins last issue, and by maneuvering I of course mean cutting out his own eyeballs to send a very scary message. You'll notice though one inmate is missing right now, Electra is nowhere to be found, and that's because she broke out a week ago, and I mean, yeah, obviously that's one of the biggest no-does ever. Now, where is Daredevil right now? Well, it seems that Matt has gone all the way to Japan, where he ends up coming face-to-face -face with an old friend long forgotten. I'm talking about Sam Chung, aka Blind Spot. For those who need a refresher, this guy was a Charles Soul creation who actually served as Daredevil's student, and well, basically his sidekick there for a couple of years. I really liked him and was sad to see him go. What's Blind Spot been up to all this time? Well, outside growing a totally sick as hell samurai topknot, he's been charged with guarding a special portal that the Beast uses to return to Earth every time he's defeated. As we learn, this mission was entrusted to Sam by Stick, though Daredevil isn't 100% sure if this is Stick when he was still alive, or Stick after the hand turned him into a zombie sleeper agent. Admittedly, it's pretty damn cool that the circle is now complete. Stick taught Daredevil, Daredevil taught Blind Spot, and then Stick gave Blind Spot a very important mission. A mission that Daredevil has actually come to relieve Blind Spot of, saying that he believes this is all part of his bigger mission in life, what God is calling him to do, the prophecy of the fist. He says that Sam has served his purpose and done so with honor, and that it would make Matt a very happy teacher if Blind Spot was able to return to New York to his sister to actually live a full happy life. The kind of life that despite Matt's efforts, he's never exactly been able to live. Now, why is Matt coming right here right now? Well, it has something to do with the portal. Turns out it actually serves as some sort of mystical nexus point. If you die around the portal, it doesn't matter if you lived a good life or whether you were a sinner, because either way, your soul is going to hell, and that's exactly where Matt wants to go right now. In the previous issue, Matt had talked about his own death and how it was the only way to make things right, and now we have a better understanding. Matt wants to commit Harry Carey so he can go to hell and rescue the soul of Foggy Nelson. Oh yeah, and all those world leaders that the Hand had killed so that they could turn them into their own personal zombie pawns. A fact of which seemed really important when they first revealed it, but kind of got lost in the narrative sauce of this story up until right now. Before Matt can fully complete his seppuku ritual, though, Electra steps on in to stop him. Obviously, she has some harsh words for the man that she loves, saying that he's taking his Catholic martyrdom to a whole other level as of recently, and that it need not be this way. If they work together, surely they can find a better way to put everything right. Matt vehemently disagrees, saying that the Fist was them working together and the results of all their fine work now lay at the bottom of the ocean. And with that, the stage is basically set for one a hell of a final showdown, Electra versus Daredevil one more time with Matt's own personal life hanging in the balance. What follows is a heart-rendingly soul-aching battle between two lovers destined to be together but never destined to be. The book even goes out of its way to recreate several of their most pivotal battles from throughout their very long comic book history and a giant collage page that is so truly stunning it stands as a work of art on its very own and in the greater scheme of this story makes a great story something excellent. In his internal monologue, Matt says this fight feels different than any other fight he's ever had with Elektra in their very long history as enemies and lovers. Mainly because Matt isn't really fighting Elektra right now, he's fighting another daredevil. When Elektra first took up the mantle, Matt wasn't sure what it all meant if she could stay the course, but now, it would seem that the light that Matt always thought was inside Elektra is now fully shining for the entire world to see. Which, of course, makes what happens next all the more heartbreaking. You see, Matt manages to use some rope to tie up Elektra's arm and forces her to stab him through the abdomen. It's a killing blow, a fact of which absolutely devastates Elektra, and to undercut it further, Matt's mask falls off to reveal that he's already cut his eyes out. Not that Matt seems that worried at all. In fact, he says that he had to lose his eyes to finally see clearly, and see clearly he does. When Matt ultimately does enter the spirit realm, he's actually met by the ghost of his father, Batlin Jack Murdock. At first, Matt questions why his father would be in hell, only for Jack to say he guessed pride was ultimately the sin that brought him down. He never wanted his son to see him lose. But perhaps that too was ultimately part of God's grand design, so that father could 
should be here now to help his son get up one last time and keep on fighting, to fight for something, to fight for someone. After all, Murdochs don't stay down, not even in fights against the devil themselves. Now, if you're a longtime comic fan, you'll know this isn't exactly Daredevil's first trip to hell. Though, as Matt explains, this time is different. The first time he went to hell, he went to Mephisto's smoke and mirrors hell. This time, though, he's going to the realm of the beast, where he vows to finally put an end to the beast once and for all, not as the man without fear, but as the fist of God Almighty. Why, he even gets a brand new flaming white suit just to really send home the point. And so that was Daredevil issue number 12, everybody. If you couldn't tell, I think this one is an absolute masterpiece of an issue in a series that will live as a new gold standard for the art form for a long time to come, and to think the book isn't even done yet. I don't use the word beautiful lightly, but this issue was truly beautiful from start to finish, a wonderful mashup of Matt Murdock's past, present, and future. The woman he loves, the sidekick he trained, the father he lost, the beast that he vows to defeat, it's all damn near Shakespearean, isn't it? In my humble opinion, comic books don't get much better than this, a beautiful marriage of form and function, art and storytelling. This one has it all, love, loss, action, tragedy. It's a comic strong enough and universal enough, I think, to stand on its own for its 22 page runtime, and then when you actually put it together with the bigger storyline that Zadarsky and company have been telling since the very beginning, you get in my mind a real modern masterpiece. That's why I give this one a perfect 10. I loved everything about it. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind the scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye